Hi, Stardust. I stumbled across your your video regarding the uh, the need for or the lack of a need for Chinese characters and them being possibly an impediment to to learning uh, to read and and communicate in Chinese. And uh, I've thought about this issue a great deal over the last uh, year or so. So I thought I'd just um, give you my two cents. It's definitely possible to write Chinese, Mandarin Chinese, modern Mandarin Chinese in pinyin with spaces, even without any tone markings, and, and have your interlocutor completely understand you. Uh, you just type out as, as you would say it, and they'll understand even without tone marks in there. This is proven from people emailing back and forth, and uh, I've had some, some text message conversations with people, and, and it's really not, uh, doesn't, homophones don't pose that much of a problem, as long as you're using a conversational type language, you're not pulling in any kind of literary or technical jargon, um, you're not going to have a problem. Uh, I think you should, you should really check out the writings of John DeFrancis. Uh, somewhat recently deceased uh, scenologist at the, who, who I think it was at the, I think he was at the University of Hawaii, but uh, his, his, his famous uh, book is called uh, Chinese uh, Fact and Fantasy or something like that. Uh, De Francis was a big proponent of pinyin. Uh, he compiled the, uh, the ABC Dictionary of Chinese that, that is based on a, a alphabetical pinyin uh, System. They they have the characters written in the in the dictionary, but it's, the characters are relegated to like a secondary role from the from the pinyin. Uh, I I think you'd find that De Francis's ideas are are kind of in line with yours about the how the character system is just completely unnecessary. You had talked about homophones, and yes, a lot of people will will say, well, you can't write Chinese without. Uh, without characters because of the homophones, and that's totally true if you're talking about classical Chinese. If, if you take classical Chinese and you write it out in, in pinyin, it's going to be completely undecipherable. A uh, case in point is that um, there's, a, there's a, 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 a story, I don't remember who wrote it, but some, some some Chinese writer wrote a story in, in classical Chinese completely using using characters that all have the pinyin sure uh, different tones, but it, the, the whole story sounds like sure, 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 like completely not understandable in, in a spoken or pinyin form, but understandable as a, as a story in, in the in the character system. So what I'm trying to say is is that the the character system, oh yeah, yeah, you, you should understand why they have the character system. Obviously, it's not the right way to write down a spoken language, and, that, and that's because the character system originated as a way of communicating um, in written form independent of a, of a spoken language. It was only later, after they had already developed this written-only system of, of, of symbols, that, that the Chinese started to adapt that system for, for representing, um, representing spoken words. And it really, I don't think it was until relatively recently that the vernacular, the, what people speak every day, like conversational Mandarin or conversational Cantonese, has been written in character form. That's a relatively recent innovation. And, uh, I totally agree with you that it's cumbersome and extremely difficult to learn, and, and the, the pragmatic learner who just wants to learn Chinese for, for, for verbal communication purposes um, can totally skip characters and not miss anything in terms of their, their uh, spoken abilities if they're shooting for like this conversational, basic, um, you know, they don't, they don't want to get into really esoteric stuff. All that said, I happen to like characters, not, not because I, I think they're an efficient writing system, that they're a, they're a pain in the ass to write, but just because I think that the characters are just inherently interesting. Uh, 
uh, I've, I've been studying about an hour a day for the last um, maybe six months, uh, just writing characters, just going from an English gloss and a and a and the pinyin to the the character, and I, I've made great progress using these the height. What's his name? Heisig's, Heisig and Richardson's um, remembering the the Hansu, and the, the the characters learning the characters is a rewarding and, and incredibly fascinating uh, pursuit, and I recommend it to any any student of Chinese or even just to people interested in in Chinese Chinese history and etymology in general. Um, Anyway, look forward to seeing some more videos from you. Uh, take care.